Chapter 10. Gran heats up some frozen lasagna and opens a can of corn for dinner. A normal meal for us. Zoe starts to make a face when she see what's, sees what's on her plate, but then she claims that lasagna is her favorite food. I can tell she hates it. She eats the corn one kernel at a time and mashes the lasagna into paste while she fills Gran in on her wonderful life in New York City. I went to a private school that has the worst uniforms on the planet, but I did get to go on good field trips. We went skiing once in Switzerland. I look across the table at Gran. Who ever heard of a school taking kids to Switzerland? Gran shakes her head slightly to signal me to keep quiet. What I really like to do is to visit mom when she's filming at the television studio, Zoe continues. Everybody on the set knows me and says hi to me. You wouldn't believe how many autographs I have. Do you have a pet? I ask. We lived in a penthouse where pets weren't allowed. Animals are cute to look at, but they're kind of messy. Do you have any sparkling water? I get up and pour a glass of water from the tap. Sorry, this is it. She puts it down without taking a sip. Mom says there are more kinds of sparkling water in Los Angeles than you can count. I can't wait to get out there. Your mom sounded excited about the new job, Gran says. Zoe drops her fork and lays her hand on her cheek. I know, isn't it amazing, she says, eyes wide. She's been waiting for this break for years. A sitcom is just one step away from a major movie deal, you know. I nod as if I'm really interested in what she's saying. Zoe hasn't changed much since the last time I saw her. She's bubbly, perky, and too dramatic. Her clothes look like they came off a magazine cover. Her hair has a little of the Mackenzie red in it, but it's a lot lighter than mine. She thinks animals are messy. She does not have one single freckle. How can we be related? Gran lets Zoe talk on and on and on and on until I think I'm hearing bees buzzing. I clear the table and excuse myself. Homework, I say, taking the stairs two at a time. Later, when Gran shows Zoe to the bedroom next to mine, I press my ear against the wall to hear what they're saying. Gran is laughing, but I can't make out the words. When was the last time Gran laughed with me? I bet Zoe gets straight A's. If Gran is going to be so busy with Zoe, then this is a great time to sneak into the clinic and check the pups. I tiptoe down without a sound. Shelby and Inky are fast asleep in their pen. The collie's tummies are rounder, and it seems like they all have normal temperatures. But poor little Dinky is back on an IV drip. I read his chart. He still isn't eating or drinking. I can hear Mitzi barking in her kennel. I wonder if Brenna took her for a walk. She has lots of energy and needs exercise. One of the collies wakes up and licks my hand. You want me to stay with you? I ask him. He gives me a big yawn and blinks his eyes. I think he's the pup who had diarrhea all over Sunita. You need a name, little guy. What should it be? Oops. No, that's no good. Lucky? No way. The pup makes a little noise and a big smell. <sniffs> Woo! That stinks. I know what to call you. Beans. You know, beans, beans, the musical fruit. David will get it, even if Gran doesn't. Beans nibbles on my thumb. I am falling in love. Who could harm such a cute, innocent thing? It makes me so angry that this guy is out there making money off of these helpless pups. I've got to track him down, with or without Gran's help. Gran and Zoe walk in. Uh-oh, I'm caught. Gran raises an eyebrow but doesn't yell at me. We're both on our best behavior in front of our guest. It's adorable, squeals Zoe in a high-pitched voice, guaranteed to make dogs howl. She runs over to Beans, picks him up without supporting his bottom, and lays him over her shoulder. Before Gran or I can say anything, Beans has another accident all over her very fashionable lime green shirt. Ew, gross, Zoe shrieks. I can't help myself. I burst out laughing. Zoe dumps beans in the pen and runs out of the room with Gran right behind her. I check the puppy to make sure he isn't hurt. He has this puzzled look in his eyes as if he's wondering what he did to deserve that kind of treatment. It wasn't your fault, I tell him. She should have known better. 
pick up pick up a puppy, a sick puppy, and you never know what's going to happen. A few minutes later, Gran comes in as I'm cleaning up the mess. Are you sure we're related to her? I ask. Get upstairs and finish your homework, Gran snaps. It wasn't nice of you to stand there and laugh at her. She has a lot to get used to. But the look on her face was funny. I'm very disappointed in you. Go to your room. I don't get it. Usually, Gran has no patience with people who turn up their noses at a little puppy poop. But now, she has no patience with me. I slam the door that divides the kitchen from the clinic and storm back up the steps. Sherlock wakes up from a nap when I slam the door to my room and flop on my bed. He jumps onto the bed and waddles towards me. Go away, I grumble, pushing him to the other side of the bed. He climbs onto my pillow and licks my face. Stop it! You have bad breath! Sherlock understands me. He always knows how to get me out of a bad mood. He sits up and turns his baggy eyes towards my desk where my books are piled up. You're right, I say. Start the extra credit report. I drag myself into my chair and open my notebook. Let's see. I have to explain how laws are made in my report. Miss Griffith told me to connect it to a topic that interests me. So I try to find a way to sneak in information about basketball, but it's hopeless. As far as I can tell, the Pennsylvania State Legislature hasn't passed any laws about hoops. I look at the clock. Gran is still down in the clinic. She's been down there over an hour. Something must be wrong. I'm not supposed to go down there, I tell Sherlock. He lifts his head off my pillow. But I don't think that applies if there's an emergency. Let's go and see if Gran needs help.